Hi there, my name is Ron Rogers, and this presentation is titled British Airways Flight 38, Can You Land and Hold Short of the First Taxiway? Uh, no. Okay, I'm kidding there. It sure does look like a hold short issue, and uh, that was a controversial issue for a while uh, when I uh, was an airline pilot uh, many decades ago, but uh, no, this is, this is not a land and hold short. Actually, it is a example of some pretty amazing airmanship on the uh, part of the crew, I must say. This was a triple seven icing accident. And let's take a little closer look here. All right, this accident happened on January 17th, 2008. At this time, I had been a captain on the triple uh, seven for uh, five years, and I was a line check airman. And this flight was from Beijing, China, to London Heathrow. I've flown into Beijing many times and London Heathrow many times, but not that route, of course. This is a British Airways route. But the interesting thing about this is when you fly over very cold regions of air, you always have to worry about the fuel freezing. And uh, they had an issue with this. Everything was in parameters, so that's why this thing got kind of interesting and got our attention right away, because we do a fuel freezing check, and the mechanics will drain some fuel, they will do a test, and they will tell us what our freeze point is, and then we set, we set a memo uh, in our system that gives us a 10 degree C warning on if we're getting cool. And if the fuel's getting too cool, we have to descend, or we have to speed up, get a little more skin friction, and uh, uh, warm up the fuel out there in the tanks. Now, the interesting thing about this is uh, they did a remarkable job flying this. Um, they were coming down the ILS, and when they advanced power, uh, the engines did not respond. And the autopilot, um, the auto throttles were actually advancing the power. And the engines weren't responding. And they actually got down to 108 knots on final, which for a 777 is very slow. And uh, just before the aircraft was to really get in trouble, the autopilot goes, hey, you guys got it. It clicks off and say it's up to you now. What's interesting is that the co-pilot took over flying. I would have think that I would have thought that the captain would have gotten on the controls. But the co-pilot took over flying. And the captain retracted the flaps from 30 to 25, which gave him a little more lift, killed a little bit of drag. And they did an absolutely remarkable job here. They, they missed the approach lighting. They touched down in the grass. And unfortunately, you know, a 777, that, that's not like my biplane. It's, it's not a good grass airfield uh, airplane. No, not at all. Uh, and uh, they tore the uh, um, uh, landing gear off and uh, pushed uh, some of it up through the wing, collapsed the nose gear, and uh, came to a stop. But they, uh, they missed the structure there, which I think is pretty remarkable. And there were no fatalities. There were 102 152 people on board, 47 sustained injuries, one was serious, and the serious injury was interesting because when the landing gear came up through the fuselage, it impacted a gentleman uh, setting in, um, I got the seat here, it's, uh, it's like, uh, I'll find it here in just a second. But uh, it impacted uh, the uh, near this person's seat and caused them a lot of injury. Now, um, before we head on here, I'd like to have just a brief word from my sponsor. Hey, let me tell you about my sponsor. I've been getting a lot of spam calls lately and I have to answer my phone because I've got rental properties. But more often than not, it's a solar panel salesman or uh, a car warranty company on the other end. Even worse, I once got a call from someone pretending to be my grandson. When I asked him his name, he hung up. It's scary to think how easy scammers can access our information to use it to target us. And it's not just phone calls. I've had my credit card information stolen several times with fraudulent purchases showing up in the middle of the night. It's a violation of privacy and it leaves you feeling vulnerable and exposed. That's why I've been using Aura, the sponsor of today's video. Aura is an all-in-one online security solution that helps protect my personal information and keep me safe from scams and fraud. With Aura, I can see what data brokers are selling my information and request to have it removed. Plus, I get alerted if my information shows up on the dark web 
or if there's suspicious activity on my accounts. Aura also includes a VPN to keep my online activity private, a password manager to create and store strong passwords, and even parental controls to keep your family safe online. And if the worst happens and my identity is stolen, Aura provides one million in insurance to help me recover. In today's digital age, protecting our personal information is more important than ever. Aura makes it easy to take control of your online security and privacy with one comprehensive solution. You can go to Aura.com slash Ron Rogers to start your two-week free trial, also linked below in the description. Don't wait until it's too late. Take action now to keep yourselves and your loved ones safe online. You won't regret it. Thanks for listening. Now, here is runway 27. They were coming into 27 left, and uh, that uh, is a, a, a typical approach. I've, I've flown that uh, many times, and in fact, um, after this accident, the aircraft was moved off to the side of the runway. They put a fence around it, but it was very um, uh, visible when you, uh, when you came in uh, to land. Now, the uh, fuel pumps on the aircraft had evidence of damage due to cavitation, which meant that the fuel pumps on the engine were not getting uh, fuel in sufficient pressure, and they were getting uh, air bubbles, and it was causing uh, damage to the pump. Now, uh, British Airways uses the Rolls-Royce. They're, you know, dedicated to their uh, engine manufacturers over there. We typically have Pratt & Whitney's, for the most part, our airlines, and uh, General Electric engines, but um, Part of the system is you uh, use the um, fuel to actually cool the oil, and they had a fuel oil heat exchanger. Now, this is a picture of the fuel oil heat exchanger on the uh, Rolls-Royce Trent 800 engine. And they did some tests where they found that um, you could have an acceptable amount of water in the fuel if, you know, there is such a thing. Of course, there's always contaminants. You can have 100 parts uh, per million of water in the fuel. And if this freezes, it can form a bit of a slush. And on uh, their fuel oil heat exchanger, the design of which... Um, I guess led to this problem because uh, we didn't have it on we didn't have the same issue on the Pratt and Whitney's but you could actually clog this uh, filter this uh, heat exchanger now the way the heat exchanger would get clogged was the um, water in the fuel would uh, form ice on the uh, inlet tubes now how they determine this of course you know the thing about ice in accidents like this uh, it melts and so there's no evidence left behind, so you have to kind of uh, make certain suppositions. So they did some tests, and they found that they could get the fuel to uh, freeze to the sidewall. Now, when, when they were flying through this cold area, they had temperatures of minus 101 degrees Fahrenheit to minus 65, but the fuel uh, never got below minus 34 degrees centigrade, minus 29 degrees Fahrenheit. So the fuel didn't, uh, didn't get uh, dangerously close to its freezing point, the fuel actually itself. And that's what we always considered was that the fuel would freeze. We hadn't thought about uh, the ice crystals in there. And what they think happened, what they were able to duplicate was they think it it adhered to the sidewall. And of course, they're coming in on an idle power descent. And they were roughly two miles from the end of the runway at 720 feet when uh, the throttle auto throttles commanded thrust and the engines didn't respond. So the uh, airplane starts to slow down. It's on the glide slope. And uh, at uh, 200 feet, it was doing uh, roughly 124 miles per hour. The autopilot disconnected at 150 feet. And that's when the uh, uh, co-pilot took control and the captain did the retraction of uh, the flaps. And uh, part of the problem that was pointed out in the accident investigation is Boeing, uh, and of course it makes sense, you would, you would tie the landing gear to major structure. Well, they, they, the landing gear was tied to the um, uh, main spar of the wing. Uh, the only problem with that is the fuel tank is attached to the other side of the main spar of the wing. So when the... Um, 
landing gear structure was pushed up through the wing area. Uh, it came uh, in, uh, in contact um, with uh, the passenger at 30F. So uh, if you were ever on one of my flights, I guess you didn't want to sit in 30F because you would really feel uh, the impact of my landings. But uh, it came up and that was the passenger uh, that was injured. And here is a picture of, uh, you can see that little squiggle down there in the blue line. That's where it impacted. It just got across the road. Uh, they did a real good job of uh, uh, missing a lot of people. And there's a picture of the airplane. Now, uh, there's an interesting fact that came out in this. They, um, when they shut down the engines, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're doing an evacuation. So you go through uh, the, the procedures and you, you shut systems down. And one thing they found that uh, they pulled the fire handle first and then they uh, shut off the fuel shutoff valve. Well, um, because of the design of the system, when they pulled the fire handle, they, they uh, took all power away from the uh, shutoff valves for the fuel that were in the, uh, the wing spar area. Uh, if they would have done it in the other sequence where the fuel shut off comes off first and then the fire handle, and that's kind of the order that you do it. You pull the throttle back, you got the fuel shut off ladder uh, handle there, the little knob, and then you pull the fire handle. Now, in the olden airplanes like the 727, it's a mechanical linkage. And when you pull that um, shut off lever to cut off, uh, you, you actually shut off fuel at the engine. But of course, uh, what you want to do with the fire handle is uh, electrically shut off fuel in the uh, pylon area next to it. Well, what had happened is because they had pulled the fire handle and disabled the power, the valves never closed and the fuel uh, leaked out through uh, this opening onto the ground. Well, they, they, that wasn't the only uh, uh, problem, obviously. That would, that would be a very small leak. They, they dumped 15,000 pounds of fuel on the ground. And what's amazing is uh, dumping 15,000 pounds of fuel uh, due to the uh, structure being damaged and the tanks being breached. It's amazing they didn't catch fire. And of course, if they had caught fire, this had been a, a much worse situation. And there's a picture of uh, the aircraft on the ground, the slides deployed, and of course you wouldn't really be sliding down that slide very well. You'd be more running down the slide. And a couple other pictures. And there's a picture uh, uh, taken from behind the fence, and they had put uh, a fence around it. They had gotten cranes and moved this. I'll show you that picture in just a second. There's another one with the aircraft. Uh, although the nose gear had uh, collapsed, setting on the engines there, and oh gosh, that looks terrible on the engines. Setting on the engines, the front uh, had just a little more slope on the slides. Another view there. And again, here's the uh, touchdown on the dirt. Uh, still absolutely amazing that... Uh, um, they were able to miss a lot of the structure and uh, slide up to the runway. And there's, uh, you can see the uh, right main gear there uh, separated. It would have been farther behind. This is where they, they pulled the wreckage up farther forward. And there's a picture of uh, using the cranes to lift the airplane. This was the first hull loss of a 777, by the way. Although the fuselage uh, looks reasonably intact, it was uh, sufficiently structurally damaged that uh, the aircraft was not repairable, so it was scrapped. First hull loss of a uh, 777. So anyway, I, I hope you found that interesting and informative. Thanks for watching.